All right, let me call the meeting to order. We uh, thank you for joining us this evening. This is a regularly scheduled Greer City Council meeting called and convened this evening of September the 23rd, 2014. To start our meeting, we're going to ask Councilman Lee Dumas, if he would please, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and then in our invocation. you for joining this evening. Um, we have a um, rather large contention of folks that have uh, set aside some time to come and be with us this evening for uh, both our regular activity and for some special recognitions that we'll do this evening. So for whatever reason you have uh, chosen to, uh, to take, uh, take your valuable time and to uh, be with us this evening, we thank you for uh, being here this evening. As we do at every meeting, we set aside a time at the first of our meeting for public forum. This is an opportunity for the public to address council relative to uh, items that may be on the agenda and to uh, give us uh, their opinion of things that may be of uh, relevance to us throughout the meeting. Ms. Duncan, do we have anybody to appear in public forum this evening? No, sir. Sure. Hearing none then, council will move to the minutes of the council meeting. In your package, you have those minutes from September the 9th. I'll entertain a motion that they be received. So second. I have a motion and a second. Any items of note for the clerk? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. I mentioned we have a, uh, a special recognition, and uh, indeed it is special. And um, we um, we are always happy when we have the opportunity to uh, to recognize our uh, employees as uh, they reach milestones in terms of their service with the city. And um, we also like to take time to recognize those that. Uh, have volunteered uh, their time for various different committees of the city as well as their contributions to our community. And uh, I can't think of a better one that, to have uh, with us this evening than Mr. Bruce Taylor. And I'm going to ask Mr. Taylor if he would to join me up front, please. We've got a little something that we want to present to, uh, to Mr. Taylor, and uh, this is indeed an honor um, for me personally. I have, uh, I have known Bruce for um, a long time. Long we'll, 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 we'll leave it at long time. How about that? Uh, but uh, certainly not as long as Bruce has been around here, as, uh, as we'll see from this proclamation, which reads, Whereas Bruce Taylor has made service to his fellow man a priority during his 91 years, fully earning his position as a member of the greatest generation by serving his country in World War II. And whereas the Clemson University graduate has made the city of Greer his home for more than 70 years, displaying his strong work ethic during a distinguished 30-year career at the Victor Mill and post-retirement work at Dobson Hardware, and whereas his selfless acts are grounded in his faith as a member of the Victor Baptist Church for 50 years, and whereas he and his wife began receiving meals on wheels in 2003 when she fell ill and following her passing, he was inspired to give back to the community in 2006 by delivering meals on wheels. Whereas this act of kindness is invaluable to the many hearts he touched each week as the eldest Meals on Wheels driver at Greer Community Ministries, 
and whereas his service was recognized nationally in August when he was voted first runner-up in the Meals on Wheels Association of American America's American Volunteer Contest, earning 717 online votes. Now, therefore, Mayor Rick Banner and the City Greer, Greer Council recognize Mr. Bruce Taylor's dedication to his community and service to his fellow citizens during their time of need with best wishes for many more years of continued success. We want to present this award to you tonight because of what you've done in the community. And um, we're going to reserve another time uh, to honor you for what you've done for the city because uh, you've, uh, you've given a number of years to that as well, too. And we uh, certainly want to, uh, to recognize that time. But if you would join me in giving a big round of applause to Mr. Bruce Taylor. to uh, say a few words and I imagine some of them are going to be about you so <laughs> I just figured you might ought to join us up here. Uh, I tell everybody that she is the best daughter that I've got. <laughs> she, she, she has to be because she's the only one that I've got. But now believe me she has been a joy all these years. She's all young, 63. For me to be 91, she's got to go in my seat. I don't know if we all live down on Poplar Drive. Daddy built the house there in 1925. Now back then, it was a dirt road. Pella Mill, which none of you people here tonight know anything about. <laughs> they were operating, and I can say that road by my house was dirt road. And so finally we voted to get in the city limits. And so I got a petition up. I went around and got people in the community to sign it. I guess some of them maybe hated me later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got a fire hydrant across the street from me. I get city uh, taxes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all that good stuff that goes with being in the city. But believe me, I have enjoyed it. And we've got the best mayor anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I thought about running to get you. I know there ain't, there ain't nobody in Greer that can beat you. I want that to be true. But believe me, at my, I tell people at my age and miles, I'm doing Great. All right. Doing great. The young 91. 91. 92 December the 5th. Yeah. So it won't be long. That's true. Well, I'm going to retire when I get to be a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. told us how old you were, but it's now part of the official record of the city of Green. Uh, it goes in the minutes of the meeting. <laughs> we can 
all only hope at 91 and we're that uh, that spry <laughs> and um, if you've got about a day and a half to do his mobile meal run with him sometime you ought to do that because he um, he, he uh, you know everybody in, in in town and what's going on with them and who they're related to and uh, who their mama was and everything <laughs> else so um, he's a good one and, and um, I did mention he uh, he served on he served on a variety of our boards and commissions and um, worked with our planning commission for for a number of years and uh, well, my tenure. okay yes. four-year <laughs> tenure here but uh, served for a number of years with um, with uh, various different boards so we thank him for all he's doing in our community. We'll move on to departmental reports then, and you've got those contained in your packet. Uh, council, you'll see the activity there from August, and Mr. Seifert will bring us a financial update. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Tonight, we're pleased to bring to you the financial report for our three major funds for the period ended August 31st, 2014. At that time, we have monthly revenue reported of $425,304 and expenditures of $1,401,952. That amount carries us 3% under budget for the year. Referencing the dashboards, we have a positive variance on the revenue side of $291,091 and a positive variance on the expenditure side of $256,741. Those two amounts added together gives us an overall positive benchmark of $547,832. In referencing the cash balance there, we have a carrying value of August 31st of $5,677,440. Moving to the hospitality fund, we have monthly revenue recorded of $141,307, and that annual revenue is 1% over budget for hospitality. We have expenditures recorded of $10,210, and a carrying cash balance of $680,901. And finally, moving to the stormwater fund, we have revenue recorded for August of $3,204, <coughs> excuse me, and expenditures of $2,803, with a carrying cash balance of $847,842. And as always, we'll be happy to take any questions you may have now or at a later date. Mr. Seifert, in regard to the hospitality tax, and just as a, a general kind of a ballpark sort of number, how does that fund track through the holiday season? I mean, do we see that that number climb a bit as we get into get into November and December? It does tend to uh, increase, you know, towards the end of November, December. Coming out of Christmas season, we typically see a decline in January and February, and then it starts to increase again. That's what I would have thought. Okay, thank you. Others? Thank you, sir. We appreciate the information. With that, we'll move to the administrator's report. Mr. Driggers? Um, if, if I may, at this time, I'd also like to ask Ms. Cunningham if she would come forward. We have some information we would like to share with you uh, from the Recreation Department on a citywide project that they have been involved in, um, in partnering with our fire, dep fire department, police department, as well as all of our facilities. Ms. Cunningham? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, ensuring the safety and security of our patrons and our staff is a priority when planning any event or an activity as well as managing any of our facilities or parks. Sudden cardiac arrest is a serious matter that needs to be dealt with intense focus. In the United States, there are thousands of casualties that involve sudden cardiac arrest, most causing the victim's abrupt death. What is causing greater worry and concern is that the victims range significantly, significantly in age and now even younger individuals suffer from this condition. Two solutions to address such incidents are the administration of CPR and defibrillation. The administration of both can be effective in saving someone's life compared to administering only one of the two. Many of the Parks and Recreation Department staff are currently trained in first aid and CPR However, we do not have the capability of addressing an incident with a defibrillator until now. <laughs> I'm excited to share with you tonight. The Parks and Recreation Department has purchased 13 AEDs, which are automated external defibrillators, to be used throughout the city. Eight stationary units will be permanently mounted 
in city facilities and places readily available for staff to use as well as the general public. Five are mobile units that will be carried on fields during practices and games, special events, and for festivals. I've asked Justin Miller, our Recreation Supervisor, and Josh Holzheimer, uh, Fire Department Training Officer, to be here this evening to give you more specific information on our facilities as well as a brief demonstration on how to use an AED. Thank you. Uh, as Ann mentioned, the uh, 13 AEDs that the city purchased, eight will be in our facilities. Um, and five will be mobile units. The eight um, AEDs, the eight facilities that we will be, uh, that will be stationed in are, is the Operations Center, uh, Police Department, the Corps, City Hall, Cannon Center, our Nemore Recreation Center, Tron Recreation Center, and the Victor Gym. Um, these uh, facilities will have a cabinet, as you see here, that the AED will be stationed in. And uh, once the door is ajar, uh, there is an alarm that sounds to alert folks nearby that there is an emergency um, or to alert folks that someone's curiosity got a hold of them. <laughs> uh, there is an alarm on the, on the uh, uh, cabinets. Um, the five mobile units will be used by our athletic division, our athletic staff, and our field supervisors um, who are out in the parks and uh, ball fields every night, and also our events division for their numerous events out here in City Park. Um, at this time, Josh will give us a quick tutorial on the uh, AEDs. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm super excited about this, especially for the fire department side. We, we have a great response time within the city, and we get there within four or five minutes. However, national statistics tell us that that's not quick enough. So having these units in place is even having a shot look quicker and maybe that chance of survival is even higher. But the other good thing is that we work together and this is the unit we carry on the fire trucks. And the good thing about this is, is it's compatible with these. So if somebody from Parks and Rec or a citizen starts using that AED, we arrive, we do not have to change anything. We can either continue using that unit or we can take those pads and plug them into our unit that when the ambulance arrives, either Greenville or Sparkler County, they can plug right into it as well and use it for their monitors. And if it's all compatible, it works out good as well, is the AED pads can be given back to us from EMS and, and restock so at that point. The, the thing about it is it says it's automated, or automatic. It just, <laughs> it's simple. Simple as you pull it open, you lift it. Make sure you have some. Call for help now. It does everything until we know all clothing from patient's chest. <laughs> then it tells you to pull the red handle, undo the package, how to put the pads on. It does it. It's a, it's a, it's late for, for a late person to do it. So that's that's a simple one. It goes. It will not do anything further until you put the pads in the chest, and it'll tell you to stand clear to the lines and it goes with that. If it detects that you need, need a shot, then it'll do it. Wow. Okay. Pretty cool. And this is truly a partnership. Um, the fire department, Josh, has helped us tremendously because the important thing was we wanted to make sure that all the equipment was compatible um, so there's no um, hesitation. When Spartanburg, Greenville, you know, when the fire department, anybody arrives, it's instant. They can just continue with what we've already started. Um, we're really excited about having these. And um, we'll be glad to take any questions or... What, what training will your staff oh. get in the use of them? Actually, um, Josh is, uh, we're working with HR right now, with um, Josh, and, um, to set up some training programs for our staff. Um, so we'll send all of the staff from the city through the um, training to how to use these. It's a very simple training program. We <coughs> have to elaborate on that. Um, and then perhaps we can open it even up to the general public if they want to come in and learn how to use these. Uh, we'd be glad to do that also. Now, Justin is also certified in CPR and first aid uh, instructor and is also going to be certified in being able to teach how to use AEDs as well. So 
the more, the better. So I will just grow excited about this. Great. Others? Uh, I just want to say thank you. I, I remember back a few years ago we had some incidents mm -hmm. and I mentioned to you that, that I thought that this would be a good thing and I'm really glad y'all did this. I think it's very important. What's the shelf life on these things? Any idea? They, they, we have a maintenance program already in place and what they'll do is they come in every year and they test them but the bill, they update them as needed and they, they can last. The batteries are good for about two years but they're under cover and warranty and they'll replace them. That, that when we go through the budget process next year, we will include this uh, maintenance program as far as our part of our contract labor. So when they come in, just like we do with fire extinguishers, we check every one of the city at the same time. We check all the AEDs at the same time. So they're all maintained and inspected annually. Will there be some kind of signage so that it'll be obvious where this thing is? Uh, we, well, we actually will put them in places that will be very so the cabinet uh, itself will be obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, it, if you look at it, it's got a red sticker on the front. Um, and again, it, we'll put it in a place where we think that when people pass, they'll be able to, to see that. Of course, the staff will know exactly where they are, too. So, um, and we checked with the fire marshal, and they can, on the exit pass, they can list it on those so emergency routes, so they can, they'll know where they're at based off of that as well. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> a couple of calendar items uh, to, uh, to make council aware of. As we reported earlier, we will be uh, hosting our employee benefits fair um, and wellness fair this Thursday. Uh, it begins at 7.30. Uh, we'll be down in the Cannon Center, so we hope that uh, you'll be able to join us for that event. It'll be taking place from 7.30 until 2.30. Uh, you've received some information uh, at your places this evening. Um, Concerning that program, uh, we would encourage you to, uh, to review that. Um, we encourage you to come and participate in uh, that fair with us as well. Uh, it is always very, very well attended by our employees, and, uh, and they always appreciate seeing you uh, in and around there as well. So look forward to seeing you on Thursday. As we reported earlier as well, uh, we will be gathering on October the 10th for our annual uh, safety breakfast. Uh, this is one of those opportunities we have each year that all of our employees are in the same place at the same time. We only have a couple of those opportunities because of our varied schedules uh, relative to public safety and all of our other departments. Uh, but October the 10th will be one of those and we will be gathering uh, that Friday morning, October 10th uh, here. And um, we, we look forward to seeing you as part of that as well. One of the things we do want to make you aware of that we are soliciting your help with uh, as we are also reaching out to our community. As you are aware, uh, we will be hosting uh, or conducting a special referendum vote here in the city uh, for our city residents relative to the retail Sunday alcohol sales. Um, that question is now being posed to the general public and it is required uh, to be done through referendum vote. So as part of that process, uh, we are in need of, uh, of soliciting uh, 30 34. 34. 34 poll workers uh, for that event. Um, as you will recall, the, or you may recall, the way that that has been uh, conducted in the past when we've done a referendum vote that applies to a city question only. Uh, at the polling place that day, there will be uh, a poll manager and a polling for the general election. And then in that exact same polling place, there will be a separate table for folks that live, reside within the city limits of Greer that are able to vote on the referendum question. Uh, we are responsible for having the workers for the referendum question. So Tammy and uh, the Election Commission has the responsibility of recruiting those folks. Uh, we've got some information that we've been sharing with the community. You'll see some more information on that as we, as we reach out. Uh, but that November 4th date, uh, if you happen to have uh, neighbors, associates, friends, or yourself 
I think elected officials could use the district, right? There's no restrictions since they're not on the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, I think they can. I think they can. That is, that, that is the definition of dumb fact. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt a thump. I thought she was kidding. <laughs> We may need to clarify. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that, uh, yes, that uh, as long as you're not on the ballot, you can work the election. Um, so we are looking for volunteers to work as poll workers, poll managers uh, for, that, for that event. Uh, we do have information. We'll certainly make that available to you. Uh, but as we are reaching out to folks, we are finding that there are people who have a great interest in this. They believe that it's a great way to contribute back to the community, to become involved in the civic process, and it is just that. So we know that uh, in your role, you know many of those people within our community. If you could share this information with folks, we would appreciate it. If you have people that we can reach out to and make contact as well, we'll be glad to do that uh, on behalf of the city. Uh, but that election obviously is November the 4th, and as you know, polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So it's, uh, it's kind of a long day, but there's a lot of dedicated folks who help make elections uh, take place, and there is, a, but there is a stipend that's involved with that as well. Uh, so folks do receive some compensation for assisting with that. But your, your help would be greatly appreciated. I uh, do want to make sure that you know and are reminded that you've received some information, but we are uh, preparing for the 100th anniversary celebration of our fire department. Uh, the actual date of that celebration is November the 1st, and there will be a number of activities that will be taking place. We've made uh, arrangements. Our fire department is working very hard in, in getting everything prepared for that Saturday. Uh, that we will be participating over at the fire department. There's a number of activities that will take place. Uh, we are encouraging our community to be involved in that. Uh, you have received some additional information about some events that will be taking place as part of that 100th year celebration. We do hope that you will put that on your calendar as well uh, and, and join us as we celebrate uh, this landmark uh, anniversary for the fire department. We do have some information you may have noticed in the media. There's been some reports uh, concerning the, uh, our issuing body cameras to our police department. Uh, we are in the process now of rolling that equipment out to uh, our, our officers. Uh, and as we are completing that process uh, at, our, at your next meeting, uh, we would like to come in and demonstrate that equipment to you as well as we complete the training and the issuance of that to our officers. Uh, we, are, uh, we are enthusiastic about the opportunity to be able to utilize this technology. Um, it has been extremely helpful to departments all over the country. Uh, we've spent a considerable amount of time researching what we believe to be the appropriate equipment for our department. Um, and, uh, and we are in the process of issuing that equipment now. We believe you'll agree, but we want to demonstrate it to you as well. And in a couple of weeks, we'll be bringing that equipment in also. I want to make you aware that we are working through both our fire department and police department with the Greenville County 911 uh, Communications Center. Uh, we have been notified through the, uh, through the Sheriff's Department uh, that they have been issued the challenge of, of looking at the radio operability countywide for Greenville County. Um, and we have been invited to participate in that process. Uh, we believe that long term that what will occur in that process is that we will go more to an uh, interoperable radio system uh, so that we can communicate not only within our own department but within multiple jurisdictions as well. Uh, we are in the early stages of that process uh, in meeting with the county, uh, but we were very pleased and very glad to be included in that process and we will be keeping you informed as we move forward uh, in that as well. Uh, I believe they are indicating that the, the, the shelf life of the existing system is running through about the end of 2016 and preparations are being made now for what is the next phase uh, of that system for us uh, in public safety. Uh, in conclusion, I've asked um, Mr. Sell if he would provide some additional information to you uh, concerning our involvement uh, with uh, the, Mr. Garrick Good, the City of Greer <coughs> versus Garrick Good. Uh, through the state solicitor's office. We've reported to you earlier uh, that Mr. Good pled guilty um, in circuit court uh, to the charges that were uh, 
placed against him by the solicitor's office. Uh, we have most recently been involved in uh, resolving uh, our, our request for restitution concerning that case and of course this is involving damage to the Allen Bennett Memorial Hospital campus site and uh, Mr. Sale was involved in those negotiations and I've asked him to uh, to provide us with a brief report tonight on that. Thank you Mr. Driggers. Mayor and Council, as uh, Mr. Driggers mentioned uh, we just participated last week on Thursday in the restitution hearing for Mr. Good. Uh, I was there with uh, two of the other claimants and uh, the, uh, uh, through a long morning, uh, we got the uh, resolution of a summary judgment uh, against Mr. Good and I'm pleased to uh, let you know that they awarded us our full amount of our claim which was $400,000. He's been ordered to pay us that $400,000. The uh, process that will be in place for that is that he will be ordered to make those payments through the probate and parole system. He will make those payments to them over a period of time which hasn't been defined yet. As they get the money in, then they will send that money to all the claimants that uh, in proportional amounts. Um, I would love to say that we will see that $400,000 <laughs> real soon, but I doubt it very seriously based on the facts of the case that uh, everyone is aware of. Uh, there's not very many assets there uh, to, to provide to us. But uh, the good news is, is that he has been ordered to pay it. He has agreed to pay it. Uh, and, and once we get the timetable uh, and get a little bit more information uh, through up after we get the paperwork, uh, we'll give you an update on, on what that should look like and if there is a possibility that we will start receiving some, uh, some money from him. Be glad to answer any questions. Just as an indicator of our um, anticipation of receiving those funds, We've made a decision internally not to record it as a receivable. <laughs> we receive it, we'll deposit it, but we're not putting it in our books. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I would request of council two considerations in executive session. Both of those are contractual matters. Uh, one is involving um, an actual issuance of a contract uh, for service between us and the Bowling Springs uh, Fire Department, and the other is a contractual matter consider considering um, an opportunity for um, the sale of a piece of city property. Thank you, sir. Council will move to appointments for boards and commissions. You'll see the first request is a letter from Ms. Janice Fowler, who is the Executive Director of the Greer Housing Authority, in reference to Harold, pa Harold Powers' term, which will expire on 10-31-2014. In that letter, Ms. Fowler asked that Mr. Powers be reinstated to that, um, to that body, and um, we will, uh, we will, uh, take her direction in that regard and I will entertain a motion that Mr. Harold Powers be reappointed to the Greer Housing Authority. Do I hear that as a motion? So I moved. have a motion and a second in that regard. Any question or discussion in regards to his service with the Housing Authority? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, in regards to the Planning Commission, we still have a vacancy in District 3, and um, Councilwoman Booker is working on that to find somebody that will fill that position for us, and uh, I know we'll, um, we'll find somebody good to, uh, to handle that position. We'll move on to items of old business. We have a couple before us this evening. We have the first item, which is the second and final reading of Ordinance Number 20-2014. This is an ordinance to provide for the annexation of a portion of property owned by Emanuel Baptist Church located at 445 South Super Road by 100% petition and to establish a zoning classification of R12 for said property. Mr. Pace, any additional information or update in that regard? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. On September the 15th, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Planning Commission did hold public hearing in regards to this uh, zoning of the property. Uh, for the construction of single family homes. This would be an addition to the uh, proposed Hartwood and Lake uh, community that would be constructed there consisting of about 79 single family dwelling homes detached. 
and planning commission, uh, no one spoke in favor or in opposition to the request, and it was unanimously approved uh, for, by the planning commission. Questions of Mr. Pace in that regard? Entertain a motion to receive. Second. Have a motion and second. The floor is open for discussion. Questions? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. We have the second and final reading of Ordinance 21-2014, an ordinance to amend the City of Beer Zoning Code, Article 6, general provisions to add Section 613 storage, including the purpose and intent, definitions, conflicts, and penalties. Again, this comes as a second reading, and um, we did request a, uh, a number of amendments and changes to this. Uh, you have those contained in your packet. Any additional information or direction in that regard, Mr. Pace? Uh, none, uh, Mr. Mayor, you do have that as your packet, as amended. Given the number of uh, amendments, I hope you've had an opportunity to uh, familiar, familiarize yourself with that, and I'll entertain a motion that it be received. So moved. Uh, second. I have a motion and a second. Floor is open for discussion. Questions? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Thank you, Mayor Danner. Thank you, sir. We have the second and final reading of Ordinance 22-2014. This is an ordinance to amend the City of Greer Code of Ordinance Chapter 14, Buildings and Building Regulations. Article 2, Technical Code to add Section 1442, providing for the recovery of administrative and legal fees and costs in the enforcement of all liens imposed against real property. This comes as second reading was met with much enthusiasm on first reading, so I will entertain a motion in regards to number 22-2014. I have a motion second. and a second in that regard. Um, this gives us the ability now to, uh, to proceed with uh, liens in regards to properties that we have to administratively um, take action to alleviate a nuisance abatement pro problem and uh, this will give us an opportunity to recoup some of those costs. With that then, do I hear any further comments? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. In regards to new business, we have several items before us, the first of which is the first reading of Ordinance Number 23-2014. This is an ordinance providing for certain amendments to ordinances previously enacted by the City of Greer, South Carolina, in connection with certain borrowings by the City of Greer from the South Carolina Water Quality Revolving Fund Authority pursuant to Title 48, Chapter 5, Code of Laws of South Carolina in 1976 as amended. This is authorizing certain amendments to loans agreements between the City and South Carolina Water Quality Revolving Fund Authority in order to provide for amendments to the reserve fund requirement for the debt service reserve funds therein, authorizing the cancellation of certain surety bonds provided by AMBAC Assurance Corporation in connection with the debt service reserve funds established for certain borrowings by the City from the South Carolina Water Quality Fund Authority and other matters relating thereto. Mr. Chuck Reynolds, who is the finance manager for the Greer Commission of Public Works, is here to explain what I just read to you. I'll say verbatim what you just said also. Um, I guess the long and short of this is the South Carolina Budget Control Board, who allows us to borrow money from the state to rob the fund, and we've, you know, actually, for y'all's permission to do that in the past. They have some policies out there that require debt service reserve funds. And in the past, the debt service reserve funds were one year of principal and interest on each of the loans that we had outstanding. And back in 2012, they changed their policies to where we go. We had to put the requirement of 50% of them there as debt service requirements. And we also had the AMBAC, AMBAC policy, uh, policies for each loan in existence. 
2014, they changed the rules at the end, which allowed if you had uh, ratings of greater than eight ratings with the three rating agencies, which we do, where CPW is A2, A plus, A plus with Moody's, Standard Poor, and Fitch. Um, it gave us the ability to take all of our money out of the debt service reserve fund based on our ratings. Um, so those monies that were put up uh, back in 2007 was about $2.2 million. We got about $1.1 million of it uh, back in 2012, and the remainder is about $950,000 that's restricted money. You go back and restrict the funds for CPW. Um, in addition to this, in 2007, uh, we, you know, when the market started uh, curtailing, uh, AMBAC's policies became worthless as far as the South Carolina Budget Control Board team because they became junk status. And with that, yes, the South Carolina Budget Control Board is, is pretty much, they won't recognize the uh, AMBAC surety bonds. So as, instead of hanging on to the surety bonds and just having to keep up with them, we've asked to re be released to the surety bonds. And we've received approval from both, for all parties including AMBAC, and South Carolina Budget Control Board as far as this goes and as part of the change in the order this night. I think answers all the questions, I hope. Council? Questions? Comments? This comes to us on the first reading on uh, Ordinance 23-2014. I'll entertain a motion that it be received. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, any other questions or comments that have occurred to you? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Bubert? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. I would um, be remiss if I didn't recognize um, the general manager for the CPW who has joined us this evening, and uh, Mr. Tuttle is in the back, and he and his wife, Kathy, have uh, joined us this evening. I, uh, it's it's um, quick to not, uh, I don't think about him uh, just having moved to town, or it seems like that. He's been working on so many different projects and in so many different meetings, he seems like he's been here forever. And uh, we appreciate uh, the transition that, uh, that you have made, Mr. Tuttle, and uh, the work that you're doing down there, and uh, look forward to a, uh, a long and healthy relationship, and um, appreciate all that you've done so far. I know you've hit the ground running, and uh, it, it shows. So. Uh, we appreciate you being with us this evening and uh, rejoin us anytime that uh, you don't have anything to do on a Tuesday evening and like to <laughs> come to participate in a, in a public meeting. Thank you, sir. Another item of new business before us this evening is the first reading of Ordinance 24-2014, which is an ordinance to change the zoning classification of property owned by Wyatt Realty Investment. Opportunity Fund LTD located at Brushy Creek Road and Buncombe Road from C2 to DRD, which is our design review district. Mr. Pace. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, Mayor and Council, a public hearing was held on September 15th before the uh, Greer Planning Commission. Uh, no one spoke in favor or in opposition to the request at that time. Uh, this is a uh, proposed 18-acre community uh, for apartments, uh, market rate. Uh, these will be uh, thus far approved up to 300 units ranging from one to three bedrooms. Uh, it will have amenities uh, such as saltwater pool, uh, clubhouse and all that. Amenities will go with it. This is immediately adjacent to our Century Park. There will be a, uh, our discussion is underway to make connectivity for pedestrians between the park and between the uh, com complex itself. Uh, but again, uh, after discussion with the Planning Commission, it was approved unanimous, and we are looking forward to moving forward with the project. There will be a final development uh, plan brought back at a later date and time when things are narrowed down a little more. That density could be reduced from that, but, but uh, it would not be greater than what is proposed tonight. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer. Council, questions? For the purpose of discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Floor is open for discussion. Hearing no discussion, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Ms. Bookert. Yes. Mr. Dumas. Yes. Mr. Bettis. Yes. Ms. Albert. Yes. Mayor Danner. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir.
Council Executive Session, we have two contractual matters, one regarding a contract to the Boiling Springs Fire Department, the other potential contract to sell a piece of city property. Do I hear a motion to go into Executive Session? So moved. Have a motion and a second. <laughs> Mr. Pettis, second. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Bookert? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council on Executive Session, we've considered two contractual matters, one in regards to Bowling Springs um, Fire Department, the other in reference to the sale of piece of property. We've taken no action in regards to either item. Do I hear a motion to come out of Executive Session? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Griffin Lee? Mr. Griffin has left. Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, we have one item to consider this evening to hear um, information in that regard. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we allow you to enter into an agreement or to negotiate and enter into an agreement with Boiling Springs Fire District. Second. We have a motion and a second in that regard. Any questions in, uh, regarding that agreement? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Dunn? Yes. Having no further business, we stand adjourned.